Well, it is simple as this. My guest today, Steve Ackles, if you've watched anything sports related on television, chances are he had a big hand in putting it on television. He is vice president of event production, college football, and Monday night football with ESPN doing incredible work over there. And I'm Brian Fenley. This is the On to Something podcast. I'm on Twitter at Brian Fenley, a national radio, radio anchor and a broadcaster as well, doing a bunch, bunch of other sports. So, Steve, I appreciate you doing this. This is not just a conversation that is devoted to you in talking about your professional life. I want people to know what you're like from a personal standpoint. Maybe a question or two about your golf game as well. Clearly, that's an important part of your life. Seeing what your backdrop has in it, golf-related memorabilia. I wanted to start here. As much as you are doing and as busy as your schedule is, when do you allow time to reflect on everything you've done? Yeah, well, thanks uh, for having me on, Brian. I know, um, you know, we probably the last time I saw you in person was seven years ago. <laughs> yes. Down in uh, at media days at the SEC. And uh, we had a few chats uh, in and around those those media days and things like that. But uh, great to see you. Great, great to be on. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's important that, you know, you kind of look back and try to remember all the great times and great productions, great people you work with. Um, but um, you know, when you're when you're with people and you have dinners and or, or drinks and, and you reflect on the great times you had, um, that's really important. You know, um, there's a lot of times you reflect on things that you've done in the past. Uh, you know, while you're out for a walk or you're playing golf or you know, you're with your kids and you tell a story. So. Uh, there's many times to, to, to go back and reflect um, and also to think about, you know, the future. So it's, uh, it, it's, it's been good. It's been really good. What do you say, Steve, is the most relied upon instinct that you've seen crystallize over the course of your career that has helped you become such a force in this industry? Yeah. Um, you know, I love your, I love your uh, adjective there, force. You know, <laughs> probably strong, but uh, no, you know, for me, um, I, I, I've just always tried to be uh, upfront and honest and, you know, to the point, concise and, and kind of be there as a friend for people I work with. Um, but, you know, I think honesty is, uh, is, is the most important and communicate things in the right way. And, um, I'm not always perfect at it. That's for sure. Uh, communicate things in a timely way and the tone of how you communicate things to people, you know, whether give constructive feedback or positive feedback um, and timing is also important too. So try to keep all those things in mind and, you know, be open and upfront and as much as you can um, and, and be there for people. Uh, that's, that's really most important, you know, uh, throughout the career I've had. If you were to go back in time and you were to keep on the tone of transparency, you mentioned honesty, and we looked at you when you were a student at Roger Williams University and the visions you had of your career one day, how do they stack up to what you thought they would be when you were a college student? That's a great question. So yeah, go Hawks. <laughs> uh, yeah, Roger Williams, you know, people that don't know, it's a small division three school and, and actually in Bristol, Rhode Island. And then I spent 16 years in Bristol, Connecticut. Uh, but Roger Williams, um, you know, I, I was a uh, marketing communications major. Um, you know, in high school, just going back to Simsbury High School uh, in Connecticut, uh, I wanted to do, I want to be, I, I want to do what you're doing. I want to be a broadcaster. Um, you know, I played basketball uh, throughout all my youth. Um, I played until my sophomore year. And then, um, you know, I ended up moving to calling the, uh, the basketball games. You know, uh, I don't think I was I mean, one tall enough or, or good enough to play varsity. So I, I, I hung it up for the, for the headphones. So I called, I was calling basketball games uh, for us. I was playing golf for, for our high school team. Um, but I wanted, I wanted to get into broadcasting. And um, I went to Roger Williams. There was, you know, the Hawks Nest, the radio, you know, did all, did a bunch of that. 
learn a lot of behind the scenes stuff. Um, but, you know, I think as time went on and the opportunities I got um, kind of led me to, to, to get into production, you know, along the way. And there's a lot of different steps along the way um, to, to where I'm at now. But uh, yeah, I originally want to be, you know, do, do play by play. If I were to go back and listen to some of those early tapes from you, what would your style be? <laughs> it's uh it's funny and I, I still do have those tapes uh they're on they're on vhs somewhere um <laughs> they're funny i mean you know it, it's uh i was with one of my buddies um you know who was I, we don't know who was color and who was play by play at the time i think we were just it, it was almost like beavis and butthead you know, just like going through <laughs> things. uh but um, you yeah, know, there's, there's passion, enthusiasm, you know, probably mispronunciations a couple <laughs> times, misidentifications a couple times, all the things that, 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 you know, have still happened today at the professional level. Um, but you know, we were having fun at the time and, uh, I didn't know anything about it really. I, I was, I was lucky enough to, to, to figure out how to plug in the camera and the audio recording, um, uh, my uh, my brother in law's mother, uh, Mary Lou Petrina, uh, God rest her soul. She she got me into broadcasting and and into TV, and she was overseeing Simsbury uh, Community Television, and you know went to her and um, she set up the whole thing, and uh, we, you know we were able to 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 start from there. So, uh, but it, it's been interesting. Knowing how much you love television knowing how much you love golf. If I was to create a scenario and Steve Ackles is with me, I'm Brian Fenley, where we were to televise the best hole of golf that you have ever played. What am I looking at? Um, that's a good one. <laughs> so, um, I could probably, you know, 16th at Augusta would be up there. Um, I would say number eight at Pine Valley is one of my favorites. Um, you know, of the top two, I'd probably pick those two. Um, there's, there, you know, there's, there's a lot. 18 at Quail Hollow is 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 a great hole um, here in Charlotte. Um, you know, I've been lucky enough to play play a lot of different courses, uh, some overseas. You know, I, I love 17 at at at, at uh, the old course. Um, so there's there's a few for you, but you know, I'd probably have to sit here and think a little bit. From a play-by-play -play and shot-by-shot -shot perspective, Steve, do you remember what it was like on 16 at the Masters, sort of like your thought process going into that hole, the shots that you pulled off, and how you ended up scoring on that hole? Yeah, it, um, you know, you, you obviously get up there, and you watch on TV, and you, especially on Sunday where that pin is, like, you don't want to miss left, and, you know, you, you, you aim – eight, nine, 10 yards right, you know, in case you pull it or you have a little hook. And, you know, I just remember don't miss left. And uh, the pin wasn't down. I think it was up uh, back right a little bit. So um, I probably hit it 20 feet short. I, I did end up uh, making three there, but I didn't hit it in the water. Uh, <laughs> but you just, you go through all the scenarios and all the holes in ones and tiger's chip. Um, you know, it's, it, that's a special place. Uh, and, uh, but yeah, it's, yeah, it's nerve wracking for sure. All those golfing memories, they validate obviously your love of golf and your proficiency in the sport. Where do you get Steve, your validation from when it comes to what you've done in your career? Yeah, Brian, I mean, um, t to me, it's, it's the people you work with and the projects uh, you're assigned to, uh, for me, I'm, you know, lucky enough to, to, to work on college football and Monday night football, you know, some of our, our, uh, bigger properties at ESPN and ABC. 
Um, and, you know, to work with the, the most talented people that we have, um, you know, that, that validates a lot, you know, and I always say there's always still, you know, work to do and room to grow and ways to be better. Um, you know, but you always, you always strive to, to do the best, uh, no matter what project you're working on. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's really the, the, the people and the projects you're working on that mean a lot to me now. Speaking of the people who mean a lot to your family, how much validation work-wise do you get from your kids? Yeah, it's great. It's, it's, uh, you know, you don't want to force sports down their throat and, you know, you put them in music and you, you have them do art and different things. And, you know, sometimes they're, you know, I'm lucky enough that, that, that they travel with us um, and, and you can take them to a game. And, um, you know, a couple of years ago, you know, we took them to a Clemson game and, you know, when they were hot and, and, you know, my, now my daughter's, you know, she's only 13 and you know, she, she wants to go to Clemson. She, she saw the, she saw the football, saw the stadium tailgating its campus. And, you know, she wants Clemson gear, um, you know, which is great. You know, the, and, you know, my son is, my son's a little bit of a front runner. I'll warn you, you know, uh, big Baltimore Ravens fan. Uh, wasn't allowed to bring him to a Monday night game this year or last year. Uh, big Lamar Jackson fan. I grew up a Bears fan, um, but uh, you know, all of a sudden he's now the biggest George Bulldog fan, and he's got the <laughs> shirt going around. And you know, um, it's great. It's it's uh, it's great to have him come come with us when we're allowed to, to be able to share those experiences with him, um, with the family. And uh, you know, there's it's, it's special times, especially like a couple of years ago, we were able to bring him out to the Rose Bowl. And they could just see the Rose Bowl and, you know, they, they spent a day at Disney. So that part of it is really, really great for me because the amount of times that I've had to be away, you know, on New Year's Eve or, or Christmas or Thanksgiving, just like everyone else in our industry, um, you know, when you could find those times to take your family and be with your kids and your wife uh, in those certain spots, places that mean so much to me. Uh, to have them share that is great, you know, and um, so, but they're, they're playing sports now. They're having fun with it. You know, uh, uh, Sophia wants to play flag football, my daughter. So she, we're, we're looking to sign her up. Um, her son's playing hoops. So, uh, so it, it's, it's good. They're, they're, they're trying all the sports out. What are you like, Steve, as a dad compared to the man who was a vice president at ESPN? Yeah, I don't, you know, I, I don't think I'm much different um, from a, you know, as a person, um, you know, I, I guess the one thing that I've been, you know, I'm a, maybe quoted as being, you know, critical, and that's, that, that's just trying to be specific and detailed with plans and, um, you know, whether it's, my daughter getting ready for school. It's, you know, you get out of bed, you do this, this, and this, come downstairs, then you can get on your computer, then you can watch this, then you can eat, you know, just having a plan in place, a production, a rundown, a timing, a schedule, you know, um, and trying to think ahead of, of things where, um, you know, if something goes wrong, what's your next step? Yeah. Always thinking ahead, always planning ahead. Um, you know, I try to do that at work again in an appropriate way. Uh, for planning and feedback and, and, and ideas and creativity and things like that. So, you know, I think I'm fairly easy going, you know, the kids will come to me if they want, you know, a snack. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, my son will come to me if, you know, we don't want to, we don't let him play Fortnite uh, during the, during the week. Uh, but, uh, and then we limit it on the weekends, but, you know, it'll be a Wednesday. He'll be like, dad, you know, can I just go for an hour or something? And I'm like, yeah, all right, good. You know, so probably a little more lenient, um, but it's all about being fair. It's all about, um, you know, a lot of common sense, um, being rational about things, you know, uh, and, and I think I'm that way both ways, you know, from, from, uh, from a work standpoint and from home. And from a work standpoint, what you all are doing in the college football front 
and the growth that you're seeing and the way in which you have these associations with different conferences and are expanding. When you see the role that you've played in growing college football and understanding that it is a full year process of setting all of this up, what is most adrenaline inducing for you in the role that you are able to play in progressing and growing the product that is college football with ESPN? Yeah, I mean, um, it's, it's become a lot of volume and, and that's a good thing, right? We have a great team uh, that we work with on a daily basis that, you know, from programming to production, marketing, sales that help grow this, this product. And, you know, um, as you know, with the growth of the SEC network, you know, going on eight years here, from nine, uh, 2014, it started the ACC network, uh, the Big 12, uh, the Big 12 contract, the Big 12 now and Big 12 plus games on ESPN plus, the American, um, HBCU games. Um, we have, uh, we have a lot of content and, you know, what's really gratifying is our team uh, gets together a few times a week and we're able to put out, you know, 24, 25, 26 games a week, <clears throat> you know, on different levels. Um, you know, in the past it was, you know, we we're only really concerned about, you know, 12 and then 15. So it's, it's really grown. Um, but we want to make sure we're putting out uh, a great product. Technology has changed a ton, as you know, uh, you know, during, during COVID, we, you know, we, we were forced to do a lot of games from home. And our operations team, uh, which is probably the best of the business, you know, figures out ways to 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 hook all these homes home kits up and have you know satellite paths and internet paths into trucks and do games. You know, we learned a ton through that. Uh, there's obviously some savings in there, but uh, you know, we you know we're still using that model today on some some events. Um, to me, it's just the total collaboration of all of our, all of our teams and our operations teams, amazing uh, working with them each week um, to be able to, to, to pull off all these games. And, you know, our, 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 our talent pool is so deep um, that, uh, you know, we can, we can put anyone on any game, you know, in which we were at, which we had to do during COVID sure. um, no matter what the game, there could have been some cancellations or people had COVID and we'd say, Hey, next one up. So um, we're still looking to get you into the lineup here. I know you're jammed up with Fox and all your other stuff Appreciate going that. on, but uh, yeah, we'd love to, love to see your reel updated Absol reel. Absolutely. I look forward to continuing this conversation with you and showing you what I can do and how I can help you guys. Steve Ackles is with me. I'm Brian Fenley. So Steve, how do you, and you talked about the team that it takes to put on these large broadcasts, whether it's Monday night football whether it's college football and your domain over that, what is your approach to helping those around you in that team succeed and be at their best for that production? Yeah. I mean, really it's providing support, maybe some experiences that I've had in the past ways to do things or ways to double check things or to think about things or how to go about it. Um, you know, having, we have a lot of resources at ESPN and a lot of ways to help us in our productions and a lot of the contacts that, you know, we've made over the years and relationships can help us come up with a tease uh, for an appropriate situation and making sure that we're using all the avenues possible to, to, you know, to do the right thing and to cover uh, stories correctly. Um, so it's, it's really providing a lot of support, uh, hopefully some ideas, um, and, um, you know, in game, you know, being there when, when need be, uh, you know, to provide some, some context of things and to help the producers, directors, graphics people out, you know, without being annoying. Uh, cause, cause I was in that <laughs> chair one day and I, you know, not saying people were annoying, but you know how it is. And, uh, you just got to do it in the appropriate way, knowing that it, it, it's all for the good of the good of the show. Steve Ackles is with me. I'm Brian Fenley. I want to leave you with this final question. As far as, Steve, as your pride in what you do, a lot of that has to come through what you've accomplished, the role that you've paid for yourself, 
And during that road, what has been the greatest display for you in overcoming adversity where you could look back and say, this is part of my story. This is part of the reason I'm having the success I'm having today. Yeah, I think, um, you know, a little bit, a little bit of it is, it's patience, right? It, it's very competitive at ESPN. Um, you know, there's times where you get frustrated because there's so many great quality people. And, you know, when I was producing uh, games, whether it was college baseball or football or women's basketball, golf, um, you know, it was very challenging, very uh, exciting. Um, but you kind of know that like, man, where am I going to go? Cause like, you, you want to do the biggest and best. And there's so many great people in front of you. Um, and I really had to think about it and, um, you know, get with the family and talk about, you know, pivoting. And I, and, you know, someone told me, you know, in your career, you need to, you need to pivot career rise at least twice in your career. You know, it's a good thing. Uh, and whether that's, completely getting out of television and going into some marketing or some sales or programming. Um, and this was a, this was a pivot for me back in 2014, kind of taking a chance to, to leave Bristol after 16 years, yeah. move to Charlotte and, and say, I'm going to start kind of over, became a CP with the SEC network. Uh, you know, S Stephanie Drulli was overseeing it. Uh, you know, probably took a chance on me to come down and help oversee some things. Um, you know, that there was some times in, in, in Bristol where that, you know, the adversity was, I, I, you know, people are still producing when I, when I left, some of the bigger, higher events are still there. So that was, that was a tough decision in my career. And I think a lot of people that helped make it work, but if I didn't do that, you know, I wouldn't obviously wouldn't be in the position I am today. Um, and it's just, there's a lot of people to thank you know, for that. And, um, it's, uh, you know, it's worked out well. Uh, Charlotte's a great place to live. Uh, we still get back up North. Uh, we have family up there. So, um, but yeah, you, everyone should think about pivoting, you know, once or twice in their career, you're going to have to take a chance, um, you know, to, to, to better yourself, better your family's life, uh, and to challenge yourself to, to do different things. So, you took that chance. It's working swimmingly for you. And along the way, you have given other people chances. And it must be when we talk about the pride that you have to see others succeed around you and know that you played a role in, in getting them opportunities wow. that you are not just succeeding at your position, but are growing those around you as well. Steve Ackles, I'm Ryan Fenley. Steve, of course, Vice President, ESPN Event Production, College Football and Monday Night Football. I'm on Twitter at Brian Fenley. Steve, this was so much fun. I really appreciate your time and the conversation. Thanks, Brian. I appreciate it. Is, is that an Adam Morrison, Charlotte Bobcats jersey behind you? I was hoping you would bring this up. And if somebody would recognize that this is probably one of the two Adam Morrison Charlotte Bobcat jerseys wow. that are in circulation in the world. You would know that because you're in Charlotte, obviously, and, and Morrison played in Charlotte. But yeah, he is somebody that when I was watching him play in college, loved the passion that he played yeah. with, loved his ability to knock down the three ball. And I'll never forget, Steve, that NCAA tournament game, he and UCLA, Gonzaga versus UCLA, yeah. has to go down as one of the best games of all time. Absolutely. Great to see it. <laughs>